Zombies and Hitler have been the peanut butter and chocolate bad guys in video games since 1981 when Castlevania let us enter into its dark confines, stuck to a 2D plane, and smite the crooked cross-wearing bastards with our double-barreled bad day-enders. No other group in history so reviled that people get legit pissed that you can't kill them in the game. Don't believe me? Just watch what happens when instead of them you get their bad guy stunt doubles, but the symbol's replaced by a picture that looks like a dinner plate with a fork stuck through it. And that's what's so great about zombie army games. They just flat out pretend zombies and Nazis are the same thing. Hitler's armies, corrupted by arcane rituals, are now zombies. Check, please. In the third-person shooter Zombie War 4, it's up to you to continue to stop that zombie menace. Apparently, three entire prequels where the heroes could not abolish it by sprinting through locations, easy clapping the undead, and ruthlessly stealing everything you can that's not nailed down. And it's got zombie sharks. Let's get to it. Zombie War 4 by Rebellion is $49.99 for the basic version, which this review is based on. It's coming for the PC on the Epic Store, PS4, and Xbox. Let's see how it did, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. Or find a YouTuber out there that you watch and you haven't subscribed to that you like their stuff and give them a check on that old subscription box. It does help. Graphics are up first. You know, a little bit like zombie movies, most zombie games won't win any awards unless you're Resident Evil and you have a million dollars in your development. Zombie Army 4 is particularly in the prior boat. It looks better than the prior games and in some places a great deal better. And sure, it does a passable job moving you from the crashing train car to crashing train car moments or a jungled out zoo run by what looks like undead caretakers all the way to a boxing gym to a sewer all in one hour, and somehow the entire way it works actually makes you believe these are all in the overall same place. But the problem here is it never looks better than just pretty good. Every time you and your pals start to think, you know what, let's LFG bros, and you do, you're sort of thrown into a new spot that looks decidedly like the one you left prior. And that continues to build throughout the game until the later levels, which I would say throw a couple curveballs at you in the game's defense, but it's still very noticeable. One of the other major complaints regardless of version, is the texture quality and just a fleshed out feeling to the world itself. Even on PC, it's pretty rough and it never really feels that detailed. So moving around sets and locations can start to feel a little bit like your eyes are sliding off everything and can't focus. And that's when you realize there really isn't a lot there to focus on. Couple this with the closed in environments and it's easy to look around and think, really, this is all there is? There's an unevenness here that's like someone called in sick for five weeks and during that time, the person in charge of building the levels just did whatever work they could to get by. While many locations are pretty drab to look at and explore, there are some interiors, however, that I did like and have a good amount of debris and lived-in feel to them. Sadly, almost everything in the game world, though, is stationary. It's a world clamped down and refusing to budge, aside from boxes of ammo and the enemies themselves. This is also a game that screams out for destructibility, and aside from some barrels and a couple crane hooks to drop barrels on the enemy's head, it is not interactive at all. Animation is about what you would expect for this kind of budget. It runs from good to stiff, depending on the character, but you do have a habit of sometimes not being able to trigger animations on items, even if the game thinks you can. Like coming up to an ammo box in the middle of a battle, if you get close to the box, the action icon can actually go away, meaning there's this nice safe line that you have to find in the middle of the battle, like you just can't, you know, look down and grab something right in front of you. Also, sometimes, and this occurred on the console version more often than the PC version, a death animation didn't play exactly right away. It's like there's this moment where the bullet and the body don't realize they're hanging out at the same club, then they see each other and like, oh shit, dude, my bad, I didn't see you there. They fist bump and then one of them spontaneously explodes. Speaking of exploding, while gun effects are great, explosions from weapons you use like mines and grenades of all kinds look really last gen, especially weapons like the flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> this flamethrower, it looks so bad. It looks like it's shooting yesterday's beer past a 90-year-old's prostate. Totally weird looking. And then when it does hit them, it doesn't really light them on fire that much. It just sort of allows them to sprout out fire effects on themselves. It never looks anything other than budget. But that doesn't mean everything's bad. In fact, there's a lot of things I did like. I enjoyed some of the smaller levels interspersed with the larger ones, with some of them offering secrets here or there as you slip and slide and duck and weave your way through all the zombies that were sort of ingeniously hidden, something I didn't expect. Also, the weather effects in particular, the soft effects and the lighting can be great depending on the level. I also enjoyed the creature design. Some of them don't make a lot of sense, especially because they're humans turned into zombies and suddenly you're fighting a bunch of Andre the Giant looking motherfuckers out there. But other than that, it was pretty good. Now, this brings us to performance. While the normal consoles are stuck at around 1080p resolution, Xbox X did have a performance option to get to 4K resolution and attempting to lock the frame rate at 30 FPS. Or you could do the performance option, which was an unlocked frame rate, 
and what looks to be about 1080p resolution. Getting anywhere from 110 FPS to as low as 70 when at 4K max settings in co-op with a current i7 and a 2080 Ti, all in the same small area. That's not really unusual. The GTX 1080 machine easily hit 1080p and a bit above with render scale settings. And that's one of the saving graces for the game, as always, is those render scaling settings. I love that those are in a lot of these games. We get them here. When it comes to the settings, the big hitters for performance were the draw distance and the shadows. Borderless, windows, and full screen can all be chosen in the game's options as well. Lastly, I did have a very odd bug. No matter what I did, I could not get the benchmark itself to run in the game versus just recording and counting footage myself during actual gameplay. That's what I do anyway as well, but having that benchmark there would have been nice. Not sure why it wasn't working. Looking back on Zombie Army 4, it's no great shakes, that's for sure. But when you're in some foggy zoo with zombies leaping through exhibit doors at you and some jackass is trying to bean you from like halfway across the yard with a gob of undigested spit as a weapon, it hits its atmosphere perfectly and that really did suck me in. I just wish it tried much harder in offering something new. And that brings us to sound, music, and voice. And on this one, we'll do voice first. So this was passable. I'm not going to say it was amazing, but it's not the level of some titles that, you know, the ones where sometimes the voice acting in the game is almost like aggressively bad, like the audio director had a vendetta against ears and accents and maybe even human speech itself. Here it just slides in and out. It's not really offensively bad nor noticeably good. And finding a random character who sounds like Mario from the Mario Brothers isn't going to be that hard. But then again, the one-liners from the characters and the back and forth radio transmissions themselves are not bad. I will say, though... The accents can be rough. Some are steadfast in their caricatures, and I started looking for my box of Lucky Charms every time some people started yakking. It is not terrible, it's not close, but you won't be sitting back discussing this at your next gaming meeting either. And that brings us to music. Now, throughout this game, there are really two styles at play here. A more musical style with some hooks and themes and chords that play out, like parts where you're trying to sneaky sneak down a village side road and a light guitar chord or two will pluck out. It's not in your face, nor is it enough to really catch you. It's just a flavor moment. They're there for a second, then they're gone, just poof. The rest is a callback machine to John Carpenter-style soundtracks, so if you like his old stuff, you know what I mean, with crunchy, keening synths, many outfitted with an eerie feeling to them, and then accompanied by mysterious rumbles and tones. This is actually less music than it is musical stingers that are longer than you would normally expect. That's when the game comes into its own musically. While I liked some of the more eloquently and, dare I say, constructed pieces from the main moments, now, if you're not into this thing, you're not going to enjoy it. You're going to think somebody leaned really heavily on the effects key in their new iMac version of Reason, but that's not what's going on here. Well, not for everyone, I enjoyed this. It's not really listenable outside the game, but instead the game has a discordant resonance that got elevated and the entire atmosphere was sort of combined by the locations, the encounters, and really a unique musical style. And that brings us to sound. This is really just a weird game when it comes to sound. First, when you're knee-deep in five-years-old zombie piss and demonic excrement in some sewer somewhere catching diseases that probably start with necro and end with itis, it's not bad. There's a fleshed-out series of processing effects on audio bounce and bend that helps. Also in the horde mode, when you just have moments to play in your moment-to-moment -moment kind of gameplay, it really does assist you in the direction and understanding of where an enemy's coming from. However, in some areas, the processing doesn't make any sense at all with almost cave-like echoes and reflection mapped to you in some forest areas. 
Gunfire actually sounds pretty good, not exceptional depending on what you're firing. Though I had no issues with the overall tonal effects on the guns themselves at all, it does feel like most of them are a bit basic in their sound sample. More than something, say, more advanced. When you think about the violence of a gun being fired, especially one on full or semi-auto, is the reflection of continued contained explosions inside of a metal straw pointed at your enemy's face. But here, there aren't that many side samples that give you a feeling and richness to each of the guns being fired. Sort of a general lean mixture. Lastly, I will say that there's some variation between the weapons, but I would have liked more. Especially when it comes to the handguns, I'd like them to reflect the caliber just a bit more. You go from a gun basically just shooting metal spitwads out of a slingshot at people to a hand cannon that should really reverberate the room every time it goes off. Regardless of all that though, it's not really held down by any of this. It was just a tiny bit noticeable. So I would say pretty good when it comes to that. And that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. It sounds like one of those made-up trailers for a movie. The Resistance thought they killed zombie Hitler, or at least killed him for good. How many horcruxes does this bastard have? If somebody or something has a possibility of rising from their grave like a goose step and altered beast clone, it's pretty much zombie Hitler anyway. Here, though, he's going to need a little help, and you and your team of one, two, three, or four players must lead the Resistance in a series of attacks or defenses aimed at cutting out the heart of the evil plan to possibly bring back the man so evil he made an entire type of mustache unacceptable for all of mankind. And to do that, you have a couple different types of modes. You have campaign, as well as horde and event of the week. Starting with campaign, you jump into the game choosing friends to join via the in-game app. The host, or if you're playing alone, can choose various options in the game, including difficulty as well as the number of zombies that occur in the game. I found that an odd but really interesting option, and perhaps the first three did it and I don't remember. But I like the idea of perhaps having a bit more of a mix and match style of options when it comes to difficulty. Now once you choose your characters, you're pretty much in it to win it. You always have a default main, secondary, handgun, and up close style weapon as well. All of the main ones are upgradable across three paths, damage, accuracy, explosive rounds, recoil, and other skills. They're split between those three. As you go up in level and collect skill up markers across the game world, they can be elevated. Raise a gun up in all the skills, which is going to take a while, and you get a master gun of its class. Up close attacks do not upgrade. They actually change from a punch to an electric fist and so on. And each one does a distinctly different thing, which can add some flavor depending on how you want to play and who you're playing with. Zombie Army 4 plays across nine missions to tell the story of the Resistance, at first just taking out the remaining zombie bad guys, but then slowly unfurling the more dastardly plot that spans the 8 plus hour campaign mode. You'll face new and old enemies, and yes, zombie sharks, and somehow zombie tanks, and maybe some zombie planes. While you're running through them, you're also blasting through the desiccated brains of the batshit insane followers of a devil Hitler. And while doing so, you consistently rack up combo points. You can pull off special moves because, as we all know, killing is the easiest way to power up in games. And here you do just that. As you explore the maps, you run across old but not abandoned graveyards, a bit of the CD spiritual underworld itself, and realize zombies should never ever ride on trains. Or planes. Or more trains. Or tanks. The variation here is actually what helped Zombie Army 4, not exactly knowing what I was going to get from level to level. And it's best to forget that these are dudes who still walk around without their heads but are somehow driving a friggin' tank. It doesn't matter, you just put that sweet, sweet logic in your back pocket and whip out that smoke wagon and you get to work. And as I spoke about this before, there is some repetition here, but while the locations are not very large, there were some interesting ones, and the enemy encounters run the gamut from great to sort of forced to pretty goddamn repetitious. It is nice, though, to know that pretty much once every chapter, some new type of bad guy is going to be introduced. Now, games like this do hinge on their enemy makeup, bad guys, and teams, especially when you're trying to mosh pit across a zombie concert crowd to power up some kind of arcane spiritual reactor so you can then power a rocket to shoot the enemy. Here, though, it's just okay. I never really felt that the enemy dynamics worked incredibly well together, like we see with some other games where you have the range kind of character and the up-close kind of character. You always felt like there was this tit-for-tat of danger versus defense. It doesn't happen as much here. One of the best parts of this game, though, is the sheer number of enemies that can come up to you and the tenacity they can have finding you and trucking you down even if you fleeted out of the area a while ago. However, and I almost don't want to say this, but the game does have a sad issue that's connected to this. You can run past most of the enemies. And while some of the locations will have a chapter that locks you behind a blood fountain where you have to kill enemies near them to generate blood and then dance around it and like some kind of summer park tourist while it opens a door, I hated that kind of idea. It's not because you can't work around running away from them. It's because you would have to arbitrarily remove that option from your playbook. And that sucks because at some point it's going to come down to that in the game and you're going to have the inevitable choice of 
just die to prove a point or run past them this one time. Now, this could have been rectified a number of ways. The easiest being that almost the consistent alliance fighters that you meet in some of the safe houses could have just refused to open the door if the zombies were nearby or something like that. A function within the game world matching the fiction of the game's narrative. And while this does restrict your EXP and your other level ups by doing it, many gamers are going to look at that as something that they want to worry about when they have to versus the here and now by not just running past some of the enemies. Regardless, at some point, you are going to come face to face with your inevitable death, and most likely that's going to be the other end of a creature wearing a 1979 Evil Knievel helmet, and you're going to come back to haunt your friends if they're still alive. I really enjoyed that with you trudging around trying to catch up to them, and of course, one of them is going to have to put you down for good. If you have med packs, you can revive a player, and later skills allow for self-reviving as well as some various different options that you have in there. Control is about what you would expect from in these games, regardless if you're using the controller or the mouse and keyboard. You're not sitting there pulling off triple LUTs or anything, but it works in a pinch. I would have loved a more tightly controlled up close attack. The later power-ups for the attack really are almost required as the first machete attack just sort of swings out in front of you uncontrollably. The things like the axe, the god hammer weapon, and the electrified punch are a bit more useful. While guns kick about as hard as you would expect, especially in a game that allows you to add skills to adjust things like that, it's not exceptional. Mouse and keyboard work fine, you can rebind them if you need on the PC. Interestingly enough, the Xbox version of the game has a keyboard and mouse option in it, and I was not able to test it to see if it fully supported it. I would find it strange that it's in there and doesn't, but that's something you should be aware of. But there's more. If you like painting yourself up in human barbecue sauce and then leaping into an ever-escalating and growing series of waves of enemies and seeing how long you can last, Horde Mode is for you. Horde Mode allows you to jump in and, of course, take down different waves of enemies as different supply drops continue to drop in front of you, also expanding the map ever bigger as each wave progresses. And then there's also the weekly events. These are basically challenges that adjust something in the campaign world, like giving you no secondary weapon and some other restrictions, and then having you play it. You do get more experience for those situations, and experience is important. Some items don't unlock until super high levels, which means a good deal of the game is indeed going to be set up for those weekly events in the horde mode, as doing the campaign over and over and over again will net you some experience, but not as much as doing those other things. You can get charms to wear, adjustments to your items that affect your ability, as well as other upgrades for guns. And I gotta say, with the guns, I loved the upgrades. There's not a ton of them, but each one actually made a real noticeable difference. For example, if you go from normal firing to the upgraded explosive bullets, you will notice multiple enemies just fruitifying in front of you, and that can help a lot, especially in the horde mode or in those tighter sections of the gameplay itself. And speaking of gameplay, let's talk about Fun Factor and a bit about monetization for this title. Without a doubt, and despite numerous issues, the Zombie Army games have always been enjoyable for the most part. Zombie Army 4 continues that somewhat. It's no great shakes, and no one's going to go running up onto a stage handshaking Jeff Keighley anytime soon as they thank their family for making the levels. But they're enjoyable. Even solo, it can be fun, but with others, I would say it really does open up. Adjusting the difficulty and the zombie numbers allows for some flexibility. It's hard not to look at that horde mode as well and think of it as the equivalent of digital crack. Just one more hit, just one more attempt to see if I can work all these weaknesses the game throws at me to make it pass one more wave. That's enjoyable. Just when I was starting to like the game, though, I had to jump into a friggin' boat and go for a boring ride watching zombies fall off buildings before realizing the boat's motor has a gas can the size of a nine-year-old's bladder, and you have to run to opposing corners of conveniently placed areas to get them back. That was really bothersome. When it comes to the monetization itself, it does have some skin and level and character pack DLC coming. It's also got a season pass. Now, season passes have become the tram stamp of monetization. You don't really notice it, but when you finally do, you're like, that's fucking nasty. However, I do have to say here, the company is pretty clear in what they're offering. And that's some character packs, some skins, some weapons, and three levels at a later time. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating system, with rent being replaced by deep, deep sale on PC titles, if I give it that score. And I'm going to give it a wait for a sale, and i got to say it's really close to a wait for a deep, deep sale, but that's going to be up to you. For me, I think it's fair to give this a wait for a sale because there is a lot here that people may enjoy if this is their first time into these type of games, and they know, because of this review and others, what to expect. But it is an average game. It is a middling game. It is a game that doesn't really go out there and try much new. However, if you're a fan of these kind of titles, well, you get more of it and you get some cool characters and you get just overall a fun romp. 
if you're not a fan of these games or this is your first idea of possibly getting one of these and the sniper testicle killing cameras look like something you'd want to enjoy, you might want to look at Sniper Elite. It's a lot cheaper now, even at the sale price here. And it would be a title that you could jump into that's a little bit more fleshed out and just feels a little bit more, I would say, or a little less budget. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Check out Reddit and Twitter and Facebook. Absolutely love you guys. This has been an awesome year already. We're doing some amazing things. I hope you guys like the side stuff on the channel. I've always done the side uh, videos on the channel, but it's been cool to go back to do some of those. Hope you guys got to see the Saints and Sinners uh, VR zombie killing video that I did. That was fun to put up. You'll see more of those from me, but of course, you'll continue to see reviews. Check out Anchor and iTunes and Spotify, like I said, and you can become a patron on the Patreon website. I buy a copy of every single game I get, even if the developer gives me a code. So if I've found you a cool game you weren't expecting or warned you away from a shitty one, maybe jump by, check out the patron, and join one of the best discords on the internet. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.